Hi, this is Amber Satterthwaite, Curator of Education and Museum Programs at Drayton Hall, and I'm excited to share with you some information we know about some of the enslaved people Charles Drayton wrote about in his diaries. Charles's diaries are a fantastic resource and they do a tremendous amount to inform our interpretation of daily life here at Drayton Hall because those diaries were really a way for Charles to record what was happening at Drayton Hall and what was going on at the other plantations he owned. So he wrote about a lot of people in his diaries and one of the individuals who he wrote about pretty frequently was a man named Billy. Charles said that Billy was sensible he was smart and skilled. He was good at a lot of things. Uh, but Billy's life was in incredibly complex and, it, and marked by tragedy. Uh, as you'll discover, Billy's life changed pretty dramatically over the course of time. So I hope you'll enjoy hearing a little bit about him and, um, and some of the other people who Charles wrote about. So the first entry in which Billy appeared was written in 1797. And Charles wrote, Billy returned from a visit to his father, Jack, Thomas Drayton's driver at the Ocean Plantation. So as soon as Billy arrived back at Drayton Hall from the Ocean Plantation, he gave Charles a full report of what he'd seen at that plantation. And Charles wrote in, the, in his diary about what Billy described. So most of the entry was actually not about Billy, but about uh, Thomas Drayton's plantation. But we do learn some important things about Billy from this entry. First, we learned that he was a waiting boy at that time. As a waiting boy, he probably worked here in the main house at Drayton Hall, maybe even lived here. I'm here in the dining room, a uh, room where he, he likely worked. So he was helping to take care of daily household tasks. He may have been running errands and things like that. We also learned that Billy's father was not owned by Charles Drayton but by Charles's brother. So how frequently did Billy actually get to see his father? I don't know. And Charles never wrote about Billy's mother or other family. So there are many missing pieces of Billy's family tree. And then finally, we learned that Billy's father was a driver. Driver, the, a driver was a, a very important role on a plantation. The driver was an enslaved man who basically acted as a supervisor for the other enslaved people working on the plantation. Now, I'm going to tell you more about the role of driver in part two of this series. So hold that thought. I will be returning to that a little bit later because it's a, it's a, a kind of a complicated role. Now, over the next few years, Charles wrote about uh, Billy on and off, but the next main entry in which Billy appeared was not, was not until 1803. At that time, when he was writing, Charles was at Sullivan's Island. He had a home there, and his son-in-law, Joseph Manigo, was visiting. In this entry, Charles accused Billy of stealing a jug of rum and a bottle of wine from Mr. Manigo's closet. So this indicates to me that Billy was still working pretty closely with the Drayton family at that time, or at least he had access to their living spaces. But Charles said that Billy was chastised for this act, meaning, uh, most likely meaning that he received physical punishment, and that night Billy ran away. A couple of days later, while Charles was still at Sullivan's Island, his butler, George, came from Drayton Hall to see him at Sullivan's Island, and he brought Billy with him. And Billy explained to Charles why he'd run away. He said that he wanted to make money to replace the alcohol that had been stolen. So he went to his friends and asked them for money or for items that he could sell. And when that did not work out, he sold his own watch for $5. At a time when most enslaved people had little or no personal belongings, think of a man owning a $5 watch. That must have been pretty, uh, pretty special to him. So with the $5, Billy bought some brandy that he was, he was going to use to replace the rum and the wine. George was dubious. George was afraid that Billy had actually come back to try to steal something else. But Billy had a proposal for Charles. He wanted to hire himself out. He wanted to live in Charleston and take jobs in the city. He said that he would pay Charles $300 a year. And he would also pay for his own clothing, lodging, etc. Now Charles asked, asked him how would he make the money. Billy said that he could make up to $20 per job 
by driving coaches, cooking, attending at entertainments, or even being a tailor, making or repairing gentlemen's clothes. Charles thought about it. He was worried that Billy might not be able to make the payments. And he was also afraid that Billy may leave altogether. So he asked for George's opinion on the matter. Keep in mind, George was an enslaved man too. He was Charles's butler. And after that discussion with George, Charles made a decision that would change Billy's life. So in part two of this series, I'll fill you in on what Charles and Billy, what Charles and George talked about and how it affected Billy. We'll see you next time.